Welcome to the Inquirer 1.0. Today we have an upload on Johnny Dark from South London, notorious villain in his day. Not that well known by many people, but he is by people who are in the know and also people who know about John Binden because that was how he met his demise. Now, before we get started, guys, if you can smash the likes out there, it really helps get the algorithm going and it brings other people who may be interested in this subject matter to the fore. With that being said, let's get on with it. Johnny Dark is not a name many would have heard of from the underworld of the 50s, 60s and 70s, but was a serious player with a penchant for violence who was given a wide berth from the old school villains of the day. He is perhaps best known for his brutal death after the infamous knife fight with actor stroke villain John Biffa Binden, one of the hardest men in London and an enforcer who operated around Fulham. Dart was a man that you crossed at your peril, tall, wiry, with a vindictive nature. Dart led a gang called the Wild Bunch, a crew of violent young men from South London who operated in numbers and were known to always carry weapons. As a young man, Dark had run away from several reform homes and had done birds for robberies and several woundings and had escaped from Pentaville Prison, making the headline news when, wait, when waiting on a shotgun charge. A well-known South London detective, Terry Babbage, said of Dark, Dark was a nasty piece of work. He liked to think he knew the police and could buy us off. He was scum. The fact was, though, that Dark was buying certain police off, which was prolific in the 70s and also serving up information allegedly to get his competitors off the streets or save his own skin, although we only have Babington's word for this. Babington also alleged that Dark was helped to get off charges, one being a murder charge by his handlers due to him snitching on two high-level blaggers over an armed robbery in Paddington, but none of this was made, being, made, being made official. A former childhood friend of Dark said, John definitely did have bent bill, in his pocket but i don't believe there was a snitch he hated the old bill there was a lot of talk about being a nobody but i can guarantee very few people would have said that to his face at the time he had plenty of money loads of houses and fingers in pies all across london he wasn't liked in some quarters because he wasn't controllable and wouldn't fall in line in one book i'm told they say the fight with bending was over his jealousy i'm not sure what source they got that from but the fact is, it was over money and disrespect. Bending owed John thousands and was telling him all, telling all and sundry that John Dart was a mug and he was getting nothing back. Plus, he was going to have a beating when he saw him. There was no way John Dart was going to take that insult. And it's only a matter of time before it came to a head. I wasn't there, but my brother-in-law was. And from all accounts, Bending begged for his life. And when Darkie gave him a pass, and let him get up. He did for John and killed him. A coward's move in my book. Johnny Dark's mob were not just a violent gang, though. They were also into high-level criminality, starting out on the pavement, committing armed robberies, and gradually moved into the lucrative drug trade, building a profitable network which spread through South London and beyond. Brixton was also one of his stomping grounds, where he had business interests in a number of shops including Van Hyde companies that he used to claim insurance on goods stolen by himself and his team. It is also alleged that around this time, in the 70s, Dark had a fallout with a heavy West Indian guy in a Brixton club who owed him money over some kind of deal. Whatever the fallout was, the man was knifed to death subsequently. The police were tapping Dark's phone at this time and heard him on the phone telling his wife where to get rid of this bloodstained clothing. The police charged Dark, but he was acquitted on a lack of evidence. And this is the case that Babington claims he was given a pass on because of the evidence he gave in regards to the blaggers. But like I say, guys, this is coming from one detective. And I'm not trying to discredit that detective, but there were a lot of bent old bill around in the 70s, especially as they still are now. So, you know, you have to take his claims with a pinch of salt. As Johnny Dark's reputation grew, so did the rumours of him being an informant, rightly or wrongly, and he was not well liked by some of the criminal elite in South London, 
such as Freddie Foreman and Joey Pyle Sr. In fact, weeks before the violent fight at the Ranelagh Yacht Club, which would bring about his demise, he had a run-in with Freddie Foreman for beating up another well-known criminal, Little Legs Gifford. Freddie Foreman had gone into business with Gifford, who owed various businesses, won a car showroom, which he gave Foreman a piece of for getting on this firm. Foreman and his good friend and business partner, Ronnie Olive, were having a drink at the Ellisley when they saw their friend Little Legs get decked by a fuming Johnny Dark, who was on the warpath. Being old school, Foreman and Olive were not going to have one of their own be assaulted, and they attacked Johnny Dark and his friend, which turned into a free-for-all and ended with Dark's pals shoved down a set of stairs. Dark's childhood friends said, Fred and Ronnie were actually friendly with Darky. It was a misunderstanding. It wasn't Darky who was clumped down the stairs. He held his own against both of them. It wasn't good business to fall out of Freddie Foreman. He had a wicked reputation of crossed, but business was first. Over the next few weeks after the Foreman incident, both Dark and Bindon sat out after each other, mobbed up, hoping to catch the other unaware to settle the beef once and for all. It was a Monday when the final confrontation was to take place. Bindon was with a group of pals, including Roy Dennis, Lenny Osborne and Alan Stanton, on a bender when they decided to go to the Yacht Club, which was seen as a neutral type bar where firms from across London would enjoy their night out. Dark and his pals turned up at the club sometime after and had been boozing all day themselves. Roy Dennis claims he was the first to ask Dark what his problem was before striking him, with Dark retaliating with a knife, expertly cutting Roy Dennis to ribbons. John Binden then run in swinging punches at Dark until being stabbed in the back, allegedly by one of Dark's crew. Dark took advantage of this and tackled Binden to the ground, straddling him while unleashing Hal, knifing Binden multiple times. Binden claims he pleaded for his life with Dark as he had his throat cut and suffered numerous knife wounds to the face and chest. John Dark seemed to acknowledge Binden's request and got up allowing Binden to get to his feet. At this point, it is alleged Lenny Osborne run up and struck a machete in the back of Dark and Bindon plunged his own hunting knife into Dark's chest multiple times. Savage fights like this have a life of their own and eyewitness accounts vary, but it seems that Dark's friends had been fighting it out with other members of Bindon's firm in the pub and some had fled as Dark was violently killed, being knifed by multiple attackers. Bindon was also in a terrible way and was whizzed off in his car by Vicky Hodge his girlfriend and a high society girl, to seek medical attention and to get over to Ireland to avoid the police. She managed to blag the airport that Bindon had been injured in a rugby match and had to get back over to Ireland. Bindon later told the police on returning to London to face charges. I thought Darkie had done me and that's why I went for him. He was playing with me. It was like a hostage situation. I was trying to talk him out of it saying, what are you doing Darkie? You're going to kill me. According to Bindon, as John Dark straddled him, he said, Bindon, you're not so big now. Bindon said, he was like an animal. I'm a strong man, but I felt myself go weak. No one would make a move to help me, and people were holding back others with knives. Ernie Begby, one of Dark's friends, had another story. He said he had been slashed and stabbed with the tip of his nose cut off by Bindon, unprovoked, and Dark he slashed and stabbed too. Begby and Galbraith, another member of Dark's firm, carried Darkie to safety after the attack and attempted mouth-to-mouth and chest-thumping to revive the motionless dog. But on arrival at the hospital, he was pronounced dead after being stabbed nine times. It's important to remember John Bindon was a larger-than-life character and relatively famous starring in films and TV series, including The Sweeney. He also rubbed shoulders with the aristocracy, whereas Johnny Dark was seen just as a violent gangster. Stories of Bindon being able to rest five half pint glasses over his 12 inch old chap were famous and his visit to Princess Margaret's Island, but behind these stories were a darker side. Bindon was a notorious woman beater and bully, extorting money out of pub owners in Fulham and generally throwing his weight around. John Bindon gave himself up to police and was subsequently tried at the Old Bailey in October 1979. The prosecution claimed that this was a £10,000 contract killing over drugs with a fight as a cover for the death. However, the defence argued that Dark's death was in self-defence, saying Bindon was in fear of his life as he was being blackmailed about losing drug money and cocaine worth thousands of pounds. 
Bender was acquitted of Dork's murder in November 1979. It was reported that the substantial appearance of actor Bob Hoskins as a character witness at the trial helped sway the jury's verdict. And that the judge, Sir William Mars Jones, had been sympathetic towards Bindon in his summing up and unhappy with the ragbag of witnesses produced by the prosecution. It is said that Bob Hoskins, when asked about John Bindon's nickname being Biffy, said it wasn't for the fact of him beating people up or biffing people, it was because he was a big cuddly bear and he had the jury in floods of laughter. Bindon went on to wither away in relevant obscurity, shunned by former high society friends, a reclusive figure dying age 50 in 1993, some 15 years after his mortal enemy, Johnny Dorr, had lost his life in the Battle of the Yacht Club.